Are you here? Wow. Marty's not here. Okay. Uh, Tom was Country. A, it was our last two tickets that we had. <laughs> <laughs> Thought he was coming. Uh, Tom Contrino. It was dark. Yeah. Is Tom here? Okay. Hey. Hey. John. Tom here. Tommy. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, I think I was your first employee. <laughs> but the one story I would love for you to tell is how you forged your original relationship with Jerry Garcia <laughs> on the Jersey Turnpike. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is there a statute of limitations? Let's <laughs> <laughs> do that. And thank you for all the years. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Yeah, Tom. Um, well, let's see. Here, so uh, we did a bunch of dead shows, and uh, there's this is Jerry Garcia. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> from uh, the Dead's road manager. This is before we were really representing him, you know, for for everything, for all the touring they were doing. And I got a call from the from the road manager, Rock Scully, and uh, um, he said, uh, "I need your help." I said, "Sure, what?" And he said, uh, "He said, look, uh, um, Jerry and Robert Hunter just got busted on the New Jersey Turnpike." <laughs> I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, they got busted. They had uh, less than an ounce of pot, but nevertheless, they're in jail. I said, uh, okay. He said, I need you to go bail them out. I said, uh, okay. He said, uh, but you need, I can't remember the exact number, I think it was $12,000. Has to be a certified check or cash. It's the middle of the night, there was no certified check to figure out. But we had cash in the capital. So, yes. so, so uh, I woke up a couple of friends of mine, um, and uh, we went to the Capitol. Uh, that safe sits in my den right now. I still <laughs> have that safe. Um, and we cranked the safe open, and we, we had the money. Um, oh, and I said to Rock, where is he? Uh, and he said, uh, I don't know, uh, exit so-and-so, some town called M Mount Holly. He said, well, it's going to take me about three hours. i got to go to the Capitol. i got to get the money. He said, just get there as fast as you can. So I got there, and uh, I realized the great fortune that I had, which because Rock Scully, who was pretty much stoned 100% of the time, <laughs> all right, didn't realize that Mount Holly was a whole lot closer to Philadelphia than it was to where I lived in northern Jersey. And, you know, he could have called the promoters in Philly at the time. Uh, they would have probably gotten there in a half an hour or 45 minutes. Um, and my life would have been very, very different. Um, but uh, we went down there and we, we bailed Jerry and Robert out. Um, and uh, um, we headed back. You know, uh, we headed back. They were staying at the Navarro Hotel. They were going to stay in the Navarro Hotel in, uh, in Manhattan. So it took us, I don't know, uh, three and a half hours or so to go, because I, you know, I drove about 40 miles an hour on the New Jersey Turnpike. Yes, exactly, 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 <laughs> exactly. Um, and, you know, I drove, and Jerry sat in the passenger seat, and, and, and Robert sat in the back seat with a friend of mine, um, and Jerry and I just bullshitted the entire, you know, the entire way home. And then, you know, we went to the Navarro, we sat down in the lobby, while, uh, um, because he wasn't supposed to get there until the next day, uh, and um, uh, we we it was the beginning of a long, wonderful fr friendship. You know, uh, I miss him to this day. Uh, he was one of the two or three brightest guys I ever met in my life. Uh, grateful Dead, real Grateful Dead. Um, <laughs> where you know, in my view, after the Beatles, the most sociologically important rock band ever. Um, and you can see that now 20 years later when hundreds of thousands of people went to see 
the remnants of the band. Uh, I don't think there's any act that's uh, been uh, broken up for 20 years, uh, short of the Beatles, uh, and that would only be McCartney and Ringo, uh, that could have that kind of joy and that kind of influence. Uh, what? Maybe Zeppelin, maybe, yeah. Um, but uh, Jerry was a very, very influential guy in my life. You know, he was just as smart as you could possibly be. And I'll tell you one real quick little uh, little antidote. Um, I, I was and remain pretty scared of heights, better than I was when I was a kid. But I'm not, I'm not big on leaning over to, you know, the, the railings up top. Um, so there came a time when the dead just, you know, got gigantic, and and um, we, had, you know, we had to play stadiums because uh, there was nothing big enough to to, to handle the crowds. And uh, they decided, and they were making a lot of money in those days, even with the ticket prices being twenty bucks, you know. Um, so they decided to uh, to lease a, a, a private jet to go from one city to the next. So I was on the road with them, and uh, um, I can't remember exactly where we were, where the tour started. They flew in commercially to wherever the tour started. And then when the show was over, you know, we jumped in vans and we went to the airport to get on a, uh, on a, on, on a private jet. I was absolutely scared shitless. I mean, the fact that I didn't go in my pants was, you know, was, was a miracle. Because, you know, those of you that have ever seen or been on a private jet, they're not very big. You know, they're not even as big as a bus, you know, and uh, um, I was a white knuckle flyer at the time. Uh, and uh, um, so I must have been white as a sheep. <laughs> so Garcia walked over and he was here, come sit with me. I sat down next to him and uh, they turned the engines on and I started holding on <laughs> tighter and tighter as if when it blew up in the sky, me holding on to the, to the chair was going to help me. Uh, and uh, uh, Garcia started to take down the runway and started, and Garcia for the next 45 minutes explained to me precisely how a jet engine works <laughs> and, and how completely unlikely it was that, that the plane would go down, that there just wasn't much that could go wrong. Um, from that point forward, I got, you know, I got hooked on private planes, and, you know, I became a private plane whore, <laughs> any place I could get, get on that. But, uh, th you know, that was the kind of guy he was, you know. There, there are a lot of tragic things to say about Jerry and about the dead, but uh, this was one smart, kind guy. Uh, we have Chris Cook here. Chris? <laughs> talked about the small shows, the medium shows, the arenas. The, one of the biggest shows in the history of New Jersey was 1977, I believe. That show at English Town. Oh, yeah. Oh, another <laughs> Alair story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was also a radio broadcast. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was an AEW broadcast. Yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 It should be remembered. I do have one question. It's more for the audience. How do we get this man nominated into the New Jersey Hall of Fame where he's deserved? Yeah. Well, thank you. That's nice. Um, I don't know if it's true, but um, English Town was a trip. Uh, uh, the show was uh, Grateful Dead, Marshall Tucker, who were a huge band in their own right at the time, uh, and the New Riders of the Purple Sage. Uh, and uh, uh, we made a deal with the people who owned uh, English Town Raceway. Uh, which I'm pretty sure is still there. Uh, and uh, they had a huge amount of land and a really natural ball next to the raceway. So uh, um, we made a deal to do a show. And uh, uh, we, uh, <laughs> there's so much that happened in such a short period of time. Uh, Al was my lawyer. Uh, once again, you know, just, you know, four days or five days before the show. Um, uh, the city uh, tried to enjoin the show, uh, and, and, and remember, you know, in those days, you know, we were all dirty hippies. Whether we were or weren't, that's to the, the adults, the generation above us, couldn't actually believe, you know, what this movement, this rock and roll movement was. I thought it was dangerous. 
Yes. Yes. So uh, they went and joined, and joined us, and, uh, um, you know, Judge heard it. Judge and, Jacarino. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. That's his daughter back there. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Judge Jacarino. Oh, wow. Hi. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, uh, um, Judge Jacarino. Uh, In his living room. Well, his porch. Yeah, uh, um, I wasn't there, but I, you know, was, uh, you know, li listening. Uh, well, for, first he went and he and he uh, um, turned down the injunction. This is maybe four or five days before the show. Show goes on. We sold, if I remember correctly, 103,000 tickets. I think to this day it's the most people that have ever been at a event in in in, in New Jersey. So then the, the 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 township. In English town is not a real town. I can't remember what the name of the town is. That Old Bridge English town, Old Bridge. Old Bridge. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they were furious about this because they were sure that <laughs> all you folks were coming and you were going to rape their do their daughters and <laughs> you know and crap on their front lawns. Yeah. You know. Exactly. 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 So uh, they decided uh, the uh, the day or maybe it was two days before the show that they were going to do major road construction. Oh. Right. And they started tearing up uh, all the roads that led to English Town Raceway. Um, and so, you know, this was, this was ridiculous, you know. Um, so the, the show was on, uh, show was on a Saturday. So I don't know whether this finally happened on Saturday morning or it happened on Friday night. I'm not really sure. Perhaps his daughter remembers. Uh, <laughs> um, what? Friday night. Friday night. Okay. And Al convinced the judge, got the judge on the phone, and convinced him that he had to have a hearing. All right, because there was going to be a, this was going to be a disaster and a mess. So Judge Jacarino said, "Okay, come on." And they called the the, the, the town's uh, attorney and said, "Come over to my house." And as I remember the story, um, you know, Al and the other attorney went, and uh, the judge was either in a robe or in very, very casual shows. I don't mean uh, clothes. I don't mean a, a, a judge's robe. I mean a robe. You know? <laughs> uh, and uh, Al, Al, you know, told them what they had done, and the judge got furious with the town, you know, and said, you know, you, you know you've got till tomorrow morning to make sure these roads are all open. You know, boom, that was it. So, uh, uh, what happened, this was on the news all the time uh, when this was going on. And I remember this day, uh, Fisher, uh, uh, who was the, the, the newscaster on NEW back in the day? Um, um, Fisher. Uh, Bob Fisher. No, 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 no. Andy. Andy, Andy, Fisher. Andy Fisher. Okay. So NEW. You played second base when you pitched. Yes, yeah, so, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, Andy Fisher, Andy, the thing that's really interesting about NEW, and, 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 and it, it shows a bit of why it got into everybody's you know, everybody's psyche is that despite the fact that, you know, this was as counterculture as it possibly could be, they went to the news on the top of the hour or five after the hour, whatever it was, every day, all right? And you got to hear what was going on in the world from our perspective, all right? The, the war, the Vietnam War was going on, there were all kinds of sociological things going on, and, you know, you got the, now the MSNBC version you know, uh, of, of the news. So, you know, this was on the news, this whole going on with, with, with Judge Acarino and, and, uh, uh, and, all, uh, and all that. But at that point, you know, no internet, you know, no cell phones, just telephones and radios. So the word had gotten out. Now remember, we had sold 103,000 tickets, all right? Um, so all the, 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 the people that were coming to the concert not all of them, but most of them figured the roads are going to be closed. But we're going. <laughs> you know, the roads are going to be closed. So I, w I stayed up all night, and I'm pretty sure Al was, w was with me the whole time. And, and, and ultimately what happened was they, they, uh, they took down the barricades, you know, and the roads that they were, you know, saying, you know, men at work. Uh, and, but because so many people thought they weren't going to be, they started parking like five miles away from, 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 from English Town. 
And then when all the, the, the street parking was filled up, they started parking on people's front lawns, all right? And they were spruing all over the place. And, the, and, and you can imagine the, the middle class Central Jersey people were going nuts. People parking on their, on, on, on their uh, there weren't enough tow trucks to tow them away. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and everybody walked. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the, the two parts of the end of the story, of that story, were number one, and I don't have it anymore, that's like I don't have any of this stuff, but there was a helicopter picture taken, yeah, because we had to fly the bands in, the, the bands in, you know, on helicopter. There was a helicopter t picture taken with 103,000 people in the, uh, on the site, and then acres and acres and acres and acres of empty parking lots. <laughs> they never got they never got to the parking lots. You know, uh, the, the other cute part about that exact day was that just as the sun started coming up, I had a little uh, golf cart, a little electric golf cart. didn't didn't make much noise. Uh, and uh, whenever I had a golf cart at a big show, I had two flags: I had an American flag on it, and I had an Israeli flag on it. And uh, everybody would say, why'd you have an Israeli flag? And, you know, it's because you're Jewish. I said, well, I am Jewish, but no, but the, 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 the Israelis never lost a war. And I, 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 want that good, I want that good luck with them. So I'm, 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 I'm driving around now. What we had done, because ever since Woodstock in 69, no one had figured out how to do a festival, all right, without people cr crashing the gates. Well, we figured it out. And we rented... Um, I can't remember how many. Kenny, Chris, you got to remember how many? <laughs> Thousand. Thousand. A third. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of of um, of flatbed trucks. The you know the ones that go on on. The containers. Right, the containers. All right. And you know, over the course of a couple of weeks before the show, we we line them up, and that was the fence. All right. Couldn't get through it. Couldn't get through it. All right. So uh, I thought that was very, very clever. All right. So, so now it's just starting to be dawn. We stopped selling tickets. There were no tickets to be had. I think the capacity of the Louisville Pass was 100. We had already sold 103. Uh, so we figured, OK, you know, enough. I don't need Al to have to get me out of jail. Uh, so, uh, um, so I'm driving.